Right, well, this rather extraordinary looking thing you see in front of you is, of course, me, but holding an instrument called a bassoon. It gets its name from two French words, basson, meaning literally low sound, because it does produce some pretty low sounds from time to time. But it's worth saying that most other European people give it a slightly different name, all variations on the English word faggot, because when the instrument is in its case in bits, it does look like a faggot, an old bundle of sticks which was used to light the fire with. Put those sticks together and you end up with a tube that is just a little over eight feet long, but double back on itself for convenience so that one player with two hands can deal with it. It actually starts here, runs down this side, turns round at the bottom because there are two tubes in this part, and then comes out through the end via this bell. But the most interesting thing really, apart from its length, is its shape. It's actually a, a conical ball, an overgrown ice cream cone, getting steadily wider the further down it goes. And this, coupled with the sound production mechanism, which is a double reed, two blades of a very temperamental Mediterranean pond weed. This gives it its essential character. If you blow the, the reed, it sounds like this. If you blow the bassoon, it sounds like this. Sometimes even quieter. Put them both together and wonderful things should occur. That's the middle note, no hands. But then, of course, if I start covering up some of these holes using keys as well, I can go step by step down to the bottom. That's using all eight feet, uh, eight feet of tube motors, and not, uh, and not an octopus. Um, and, of course, the bassoon is quite well known for the sort of solos it plays down there rather grisly, rather sort of scary tunes, like this one. Lots of tunes like that. That was actually from The Hall of the Mountain King by Grieg. If you go up the instrument, it has a very characteristic feature in the middle bridge, a sort of dry, woody tone, which is used for a lot of quite comic tunes, really. This is a, a piece that actually started life as a violin solo by a composer called Sinai, that has been pinched by bassoonists because they're always on the fiddle and because it suits their instrument quite well. So far we've heard really the, the lower part of the instrument, the, the bass register, the baritone register. But the instrument of course does also have a tenor register and it can go quite high. And here's a tune which is actually scored for bassoon and corongli in unison. I'm sure you know what it is, where it comes from. <laughs> different sort of feel up there altogether. Well, there are two things about the bassoon that perhaps do serve to make it slightly challenging for younger people. The first is the size, but uh, this is a full-size bassoon, but of course nowadays you can get uh, mini bassoons, Fagatini, Faganelli, and uh, various other names like that 
little instruments so that people aged about nine or ten can do it. I didn't start till I was actually 13, and I'm full of admiration when I see the, the students here in this orchestra, all of whom are about 13 or 14, and I've done their grade eight and so on, and I haven't even started. The first thing is its size, but you can get much smaller versions to start off on. The second thing is the reed, but I think if you just persevere, and just do a little bit of practice every day, that's the thing really, um, because you build up stamina, you build up contact with the instrument. It perhaps is not one that you can pick up and just do occasionally. You need a sort of regular contact with it, and then you'll find you get on very well with it, I think. <laughs>